I am going to say something like threshold is 1.5. What I just did was tell Python, create a variable called threshold and point it at that value. Variables are created by use. You don't have to declare them. You don't have to warn Python. There is going to be a variable called threshold, low, and its type shall be float. You just say, look, this is a value. I want that name to point at that value. Again, the trade-off I was talking about 15 minutes ago. If I tell you in advance that threshold is always going to be a floating point number, you can check my programs for correctness more easily, and you can optimize their performance. But now I've constrained you, right? and there's more typing that you've got to do. In this case, not a lot. In other more complicated cases, languages like Python and MATLAB save you a lot of typing and a lot of you know, setup work. The trade-off is, if I now say something like threshold equals string 1.5, Python is quite happy to do that. This now holds the string digit 1, decimal, digit 5, not the number 1.5. Two very different things. And Python says, OK, you changed your mind. Well, if the rest of the program is expecting that to be a real number, and it's in fact a string, things are going to blow up. right? Or what's worse, they will work. They will just generate the wrong answer, but not generate an error message. Well, I'm not really sure he should be doing this, but he's the boss, so I'll go ahead and do this, and I'll just fail silently. Right? Worst possible outcome is the program actually runs and doesn't tell you that it's doing the wrong thing. Okay. We'll be looking probably on Thursday at error handling to make sure that doesn't happen. Everybody okay so far? Okay. Now, let's get into something a little bit more complicated. Count equals 3, while count is greater than 0. Print count. Count equals count minus 1. 3, 2, 1. I've assigned the value 3 to a variable count. I've created the variable because it didn't exist before, and it now points at the value 3. While its value is greater than 0, I'm going to print it out and then subtract 1 from it. Count minus 1 is 2. I stuff that back in there. Come around again. Yep, it's greater than 0. Print it out. Count gets 1. Greater than 0. Print it out. Count gets 0. No, it's not greater than 0, so I come out of the loop. Please, this is really important. Tell me if this makes no sense to you at all. Okay. I'm assuming that everybody in this course has done at least a little bit of programming before. You know what a loop is. You know what an if-then-else is. I'm not going to make many more assumptions. But if you have never programmed before, a lot of the next few days is going to be incomprehensible. So this is really my test. If you know what this is doing, if you've got a model in your head of what's happening here, we're okay. One other thing. Notice the indentation here. I indented by a couple of spaces. That's what tells Python these are the statements that are in this loop. It uses indentation. In a language like Java, you would open a curly brace here, have your statements probably with semicolons at the end, and close a curly brace here. In Python, it's while count greater than zero, colon, and then the things that are inside the loop are indented. It doesn't matter how much as long as the indentation is uniform. If you use two spaces, use two spaces for the whole block. If you use four spaces, use four spaces and so on.